mightily, mightily, mightily in the spirit. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we're trying to be like, man. Let's go to uh, Acts chapter 18 right here. Let's get Acts chapter 18, and I want to get Apollo since that's on my spirit right now. You know, look, the wicked flee when no man pursues. Everybody got up out of here real fast. <laughs> Acts chapter 18? Yeah, let's start at verse... Um, Let's see. Start at verse 24. Book of Acts, chapter 18, verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, uh -huh. an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures. He was what? Mighty in the scriptures. What was his brother? Mighty in the scriptures. Hey, that's what we coming out here for, man. We coming out here to let so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans know who you are according to the Bible, man. We all had to tell you that you are God's chosen people. That you are not a, a, a thug, that you're not a criminal. All, all of what the media tries to put out there about so-called blacks and Latinos. You're not a pimp, you're not a hoe, you're not a gangbanger, you're not a thot, you're not a murderer, man. All of these uh, stigmas was put on us by our oppressors, by our enemies, man. You know what I'm saying? But we're trying to uh, uh, bring you back to remembrance of who you are and what you are, man. And trying to make you mighty in the scriptures, man. You know, like Brother Apollos, go ahead. And mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. Uh -huh. And being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. So we doing just like Apollos was in the ancient times. He went and he taught. He taught boldly in the synagogues, man. He was teaching the word of God. And he didn't back down from no discourse. They said that the brother was a mighty man. Right? And he was instructed in the way of the Lord. That's what we out here for. We out here to instruct our people in the way of Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you believe in Christ, little brother? This your family right here? I tell your family to come here right quick. How y'all doing? Y'all got time for the word? <laughs> hey, sister. That's your mom's? Okay, okay. Hey, hey, little brother, you an Israelite. More than likely, I believe you an Israelite. Is your father black? Okay, brother, you're an Israelite, huh? That's your biblical nationality. And you know who else was an Israelite? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was an Israelite. And he was dark-skinned and he had woolly hair. Jesus Christ had an afro, brother. You see what I'm saying? So that's what you are, man. So um, bring it out, go ahead. Diligent, and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. So, but at this time, Apollos only knew up to the baptism of John, right? Go ahead. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, uh -huh. whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Look, so you had a powerful and mighty couple, Priscilla and Aquila. They, they seen uh, Apollos teaching the word boldly by himself. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and what? They took unto him and expounded him, unto him uh, the way of the Lord more perfectly. You know what I'm saying? They went and taught him Jesus Christ and the acts of Yahweh Shah. You know what I'm saying? And all that came about after that. Right? Go ahead. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews. He did what? Mightily convinced the Jews. Hey, that's what we out here to do, man. We out here to mightily convince the Jews, man. The real Jews are the so-called blacks, man. And you know what I'm saying? And the real Israelites are the so-called Latinos, man. We make up of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? So we out here to mightily convince our people who you are and what you have to do in order to receive salvation in these last days. Otherwise, you're gonna get put to death here in America. Because God is going to destroy America for all of his wickedness, man. For all of the wickedness and the crimes that they have committed against his chosen people. Now, all these nations... Go ahead. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Uh -huh. Now we beseech you, Salute. brethren. How y'all doing? How y'all sisters doing? Y'all got time for the word of God? Y'all got time? Come talk to us right quick. We want to let y'all know something very important. Come on, sis. We got to let y'all know something. This is the most important thing y'all ever going to hear. Years that you be a part of right. church. You know what I'm saying? So now let me ask y'all this first. What is y'all nationality? What do you guys identify as? So I'm looking at y'all, y'all all beautiful, different shades of brown, but what do you identify yourself as? Because I mean, I could ask plenty of our people what their nationality is. You know how many answers I'm gonna get? I'm gonna get mixed. I'm gonna get black. Somebody will say I'm African. Somebody will say I'm Christian. Somebody might say I'm lesbian. 
You know what I'm saying? But what who, what do we call ourselves, right? Because where do we come from? Do we know as a people? Because you could say the Chinese come from where? China. China. The Japanese come from where? They come from Japan, right? You look at all these other nations of people, they know where they come from geographically. Where do we come from? Like, do we have a, 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 a specific country, a specific tribe? Where do we come from? Did that not get taken from us in slavery? Do we not have names like Johnson, Jones, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, what else? Wilson. Wilson. Washington. <laughs> Washington. The, where do these names come from? Jefferson. They all them presidents. Exactly. They were doing right. all the raping. Yeah, that comes from some, uh, people that we know we don't descend from, right? And we can look on a physical eye test, eye level, and see that we're superior on a physical level. When we look at sports, when we look at boxing, basketball, football, you know, what up, baseball, what have you, we dominate on a physical level. But not even just that, on an intellectual level as well. Who created the stoplights? One of our ancestors did. The first cellular phone, a black person created that. The GPS system, a black woman created that. We know intellectually we're superior than everybody else as well. You know what I'm saying? So now, what does God call us according to the Bible? That's what we wanted to get to. Do you know? Does anybody know? Huh? You want to say that? A child of God. Okay, I like that. I like that. So now, give me Deuteronomy 1 and verse 1. Okay. You guys familiar with Moses? Yeah. What was Moses famous for? Saving the people. Saving what people? Yeah. The Israelites, right? So now, what did God do to the Egyptians? He punished him in what way? What were some of the things that God did to them? Turned the water into blood, sent the serpents to Lord. Right. Blood, did he? Sent the, the locusts. And right. All that. What did he do to the firstborn children of the Egyptians? He killed them, right? All for the sake of who? For the sake of Christ. For the who? For the sake of Christ. Well, Christ wasn't alive at that time, right? But he did for it for the sake of his people. Yeah, for his people. His people. And, and again, Let's get, matter of fact, hold that. Exodus 3 and 10 right quick. Just to show you that God has a particular people that he chose upon this earth. And those people are still here to this day. You know what I'm saying? So Exodus chapter 3 and verse 10. And Book then, of, go ahead. Go ahead right. Right. Book of Exodus chapter 3 verse 10. Uh -huh. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people. My who? My people. Who is his people? The children of Israel. So God's people are the children of Israel according to the Bible. You know what I'm saying? So now, go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 right quick. I want to show you guys something real fast, man. You guys familiar with some of our history? All of the things that happened to us as a people. You see the depiction of the slave ships. You see the lynchings. You see they're being uh, burned on a torch upside down. You see, look, look at these, some of these images, horrific images. This is Emmett Till right here. Y'all know Emmett Till? Yeah. We know that the story of what happened to that boy, of the he whistled at the white woman. That you know was his crime. He looked at a white woman the wrong way. Or right. they say he did. And I think she came out recently, a few years ago, and said that that wasn't true. Yeah, they just said that it, it wasn't true, that they didn't find any evidence. Exactly. And she didn't get arrested for it, right? Nope. Didn't get arrested for it. Now, and I just made mention how uh, they arrested a German woman who's in her 90s now for something, for her role and uh, 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 what's that? Uh, with, the Jew? With, the, the Holocaust. with the Holocaust. She's 90 something years old. They can arrest her for something that she did to the Jewish people, right? But we can't get, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, crimes uh, that were committed against our people, you know what I'm saying, for those people to be punished. We can't get that, right? And look, the same thing happened to uh, Emmett Till, happened to a boy named Jawan Charles in the South last year. He was playing with his white friends and he drowned somehow but his face looked all damaged like you see just like this. You know what I'm saying? So these things are still happening to us as a people and all of that is Bible prophecy. We're gonna show you in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. After the Most High used Moses to deliver the Israelites out of Egypt, the Most High had them in the wilderness for a period of 40 years. And during that time, God that gave them the commandments and he gave them stipulations. He said, I'm gonna give you a blessing or I'm gonna give you a curse. Now it was up to the Israelites what they were gonna do with keeping that part of their contract, the covenant, the agreement that God made with them to be his people, right? So now we're gonna jump straight to the curses, right? Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So Moses is saying, it will come to pass in the future. 
and it shall come to pass that thou wilt not hearken me and listen to the voice of the Lord thy God. Go ahead. To observe to do all his commandments. Some of the commandments. All his commandments. Two of the commandments. All. Israel commandments. had to do all the commandments. Right? So now go ahead on that. And his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, was a curse a good thing or a bad thing? What you guys think? You said somebody said bad? Bad. Bad, right? Curse is a bad thing, right? So we're going to read uh, some of these curses, and through the process of elimination, we are we are going to identify who these people are. Verse 16. Go ahead. Verse 16. Uh -huh. Curse shall thou be in the city, and curse shall thou be in the field. Now, in every major city in America, who lives in the, in the worst areas? In the ghettos, the slums, the barrios, the projects. Our people, right? We live in the worst areas, right? So God said, cursed in the city and cursed in the field. Who was working in the cotton fields? Our people, right? And this, you can Google images, little babies picking cotton. And check this out. Even to this day, in the prison of Louisiana, they, they make them pick cotton still to this day. So God said that that's a curse he put on his people. Drop down to verse 30 right quick. You know, because right now in the schools, they're trying to push the critical race theory, right? They don't want this type of information and knowledge to be exposed out there, but this is our history. The most high, I mean, not, not the most high, but just in a general sense, it says what? In order to know where you're going, you gotta know who you are. You know what I'm saying? You gotta know history or otherwise it's going to repeat itself. You see what I'm saying? So now read verse 30 right Verse quick. 30, thou shalt betroth a wife and another man shall lie with her. Now what's that going into? You are going to betroth, meaning be engaged to or be married to a woman, and another man's gonna lie with it. We see movies like Roots, 12 Years a Slave, Django, Antebellum. Did not the slave master used to at any point in time come and take a man's wife, a slave's wife, and sleep with her at any point in time? Absolutely, right? And we know that that happened to our ancestors. We see the artist's depictions right here. You see what I'm saying? So the God said that that's a curse. Go ahead. Thou shalt build in house and thou shalt not dwell therein. Who built up America, man? Huh? Some of the nicest areas, man, our ancestors did that. This country would not be what it is today unless our ancestors did it. The White House was actually built by black people. You see what I'm saying? So drop down to verse 32 right quick. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Right, and you guys heard of the Willie Lynch theory? The Willie Lynch uh, book? Sister heard, y'all heard of it? Now, what was he doing in that book? What did he talk about? He talked about dividing the, uh, the black families. How to divide and separate your slaves. What they used to do is they used to separate the, uh, the, the children, send a boy to Alabama, send a little daughter to Mississippi, send the father to uh, Georgia. And that's how they kept our families divided. Even to this day, our people get CPS called upon them and get our children taken through that way. There was a couple viral videos of this couple that got their children taken away from them. And there was nothing they could do, right? Keep rolling on that one. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hands. Yeah, and you, we had no power, no physical, no uh, military to get our people back, no uh, financial means to get our people back. You know what I'm saying? So that's how we know that these things are cursed. Drop down to verse 37 right quick. Verse 37. Uh -huh. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations whither the Lord shall lead thee. Now, a proverb, an astonishment, a byword, that's being called something out of your God given nationality. Like I said, we like to call ourselves African American. That term didn't come about until 1986 when Jesse Jackson presented that to the government. So some of us is older than that term. Right before that, they called us Negro. Before that, they called us Afro-American. They called us colored. We've been called everything under the sun, but who we truly are, right? So uh, so that's, God said that's a proverb, a byword, and an astonishment, right? Uh -huh. Drop down to verse 48. We're gonna get some of the biggest curses, and without the shadow of a doubt, you guys gonna know who you are right here to this day, right? Go ahead. Verse, verse 48. 48. Uh -huh. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. You're gonna serve your friends? Thine enemies. Your homies. Thine enemies. Okay, God said we're gonna serve our enemies. What? Which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. So when we want something to eat, we like to eat at Outback Steakhouse, Hooters, all of these places that's owned by who? Do we own it? You say who? White man, right? We like to get something to drink. We like the sunny water. We like Crystal Geyser, Coral Water, Smart Water. Do we own any of those things? No. What about uh, the clothing? 
Some of us might have our own businesses, but where did the material come from? It comes from oh, the white man, somebody from our, another nation, made in China, somewhere else, right? So God said that these people are our enemies, right? Keep going on that right quick. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Right, and it said that he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. And we see that all the times depicted in movies. Amistad, you know what I'm saying? They had iron chains around our necks. We see that all the time. God said he was going to do this to the Israelites. You know what I'm saying? So who are we according to the Bible? We are the true Israelites according to the Bible. Because when you look at the term African-American, that's the name of two different white men. One, Leo Sipius Africanus, who conquered uh, Hannibal during the Second Punic Wars in 202 BC. And then who else? Amerigo Vespucci. So when you say I'm African-American, you saying what? You, you are a descendant of two different white people. When you say you black, black doesn't denote anything. There's not a country called black. We all different shades of brown. You know what I'm saying? There's no black country. What's the black language? What's the black culture? All of these things we made up over here in America or we was given these terms and ideologies over here in America. You know what I'm saying? So who God called us according to the Bible are the Israelites. Drop down to verse 68 right quick. Verse 68. Now check this out, huh? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With what? With ships. Now when you look geographically, Israel and Egypt is connected. You don't need a ship. You don't need a ship to get from Israel to Egypt because the Israelites walked out of Egypt into the land of Israel. So now when the Most High said, I'm going to send you into Egypt again with ships, Egypt means something. When you look at the word Egypt, it goes back to the Greek word Egyptos and to the Hebrew word Matazaria. And that means slavery, oppression, or captivity. So when God is saying, I'm going to send you into Egypt again with ships, what is he saying? I'm going to send you into slavery again with ships. Yeah, and what's going to happen after that? Go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So he said, how I tell you what's going to happen, that's how it's going to happen. And you're not going to see your homeland no more, right? But he, he promised us that we wouldn't see slavery no more if we kept the commandments. But our people failed to keep the commandments, and now we have to suffer all of these curses. Right, keep going on that? And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. He said, well, once we get to this place, we're going to be sold unto our enemies. Did they not have auction blocks? They say sold to Master Johnson for $300. But we have this little young buck right here, 12 years old, strong. He could, he could build up a tower for you in less than, you know what I'm saying? That's how they did it. And, and look, and that still happens even in the NFL. They holding off auction blocks. They, they measuring the guy, seeing how fast he could run, how fast he could sprint. You know what I'm saying? These are curses that God put upon us. J uh, finish that and jump up to 54. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. So he said we're going to be sold as bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. That word buy is going into redeem. We've had Malcolm X, he tried. Martin Luther King. Uh, uh, Marcus, Garvey. Marcus Garvey. You had uh, Har uh, Harriet Tubman. We had plenty of people try to get us out of this captivity, and they haven't been able to. The only way we're going to get out of this oppression that we still living in is if we come back to the covenant that our ancestors made with the Most High through Moses. You see what I'm saying? So jump, jump up to 54 right quick. We're going to get y'all a few more, right? Verse 54. 54 uh -huh. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother. Right, so at one point in time, our people had love for one another. You know what I'm saying? But now we have an evil eye towards one another. That's why you got the crypts and the bloods. What you looking at? Where you from? Where you from, homie? That, that's an evil eye towards your brother. You don't see no other nation of people envying one another or hating one another like we do, right? You know what I'm saying? So God said that that's a curse as well. Finish that, go ahead. And toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Which he shall stay? He shall leave. Look, how many of us suffer from not having their fathers in the household? I grew up without my father. I, know, I believe his brother did as well. But a lot of so-called black people suffer from not having their fathers in the household. And God said that that's a curse. So why is it important that we tell you who you are according to the Bible? Because salvation was only for a particular group of people. Go to the book of Acts chapter 5 right quick. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of, what we learn out the Christian church is a lot of lies, right? Did Christ look like this? Is this how Christ looked? No. No, how does the Bible depict Christ? Describe hair. Hair like wool. Brass. Let's get it right quick. Hold that. Let's get Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. Because look, 
if Christ didn't look like this, and you saying that he's a so-called black man with woolly hair, with, am I right? With woolly hair, then how did the rest of his people look? Christ was a Jew from the tribe of Judah. He was an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. The Israelites would be a, a, a dark-skinned people, would they not? Let's get it right here. Revelation 1 and 14. Book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So the Bible depicts him, his head and his hairs were white like wool. So it'd be white in color. And we see a dirty blonde hair, right? That's already, y'all like baseball? Anybody like baseball? That would be strike one against this the artist depiction right here, right? Go ahead. As white as snow. As white as snow. So it said white like wool, white in color, meaning fully gray, and the texture like wool. Go ahead. His eyes, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So why did he say that his eyes were as a flame of fire? Because Moses prophesied in Genesis 49 that his eyes would be red with wine. And when you read about in the book, in the gospel, it said that wine, uh, Christ was a wine dipper. He drank wine, right? Go ahead. In his feet, like unto fine brass. Like unto what? Unto fine brass. This is what brass looks like, right? So brass is brown, it's like a penny. But how brown was it? Go ahead. As if they burn in a furnace. So if you put anything in a furnace, what color is it going to turn? It's going to get real dark, right? Or it's going to be dark brown. So that's that, that's how Christ looked like. Let's get his, his poor father, King Solomon. King Solomon even said what he looked like. You see? Uh huh? Okay, no problem. So now let me. Okay, let me just ask y'all one more thing, huh? <laughs> one more thing. What's your nationality? Say that again. That's right. What, how about you? Is it like what's your, what's your nationality? <laughs> I want to hear all of y'all say it. What's your nationality according to the Bible? Israelite. 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 Hey, look, y'all, God's chosen people. That's right. God said in Deuteronomy 7 and 6, I have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all nations upon this earth. So y'all got to remember that, man, and look into y'all true history because it's important. All right, Christ died for the Israelites, and he's going to deliver our people in these last days. And we're going to be ruling in the kingdom of heaven, and all these nations are going to have to pay for what their ancestors did to our people. Y'all see what I'm saying? So even it tells us that in Revelation 13 and 10, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Did, did not they lead us into captivity? So look, God said that they got to go into captivity. And Christ was talking, that was Christ talking at that time. He was talking to his people. You know what I'm saying? So we had to let y'all know that. Y'all beautiful family. You know what I'm saying? Y'all Israelites, y'all special, and y'all God's chosen people. That's right. All praises to the most high. All right. All praises to the most high. Let me just get one more. Computer, right? Computer. Let me get, uh, man, resurrect the dead. Let's get out uh, Luke 15 right quick, man. Luke 15, man. Also, I wrote. Look at Luke. Chapter 15. Let me see where I'm going to start. Uh, start at verse 11. Starting at verse 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall unto me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the young son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. Right, so right here, this is given a parable, right? He's denoting a father giving his inheritance and dividing it between his two sons, you know? so. You know, and that's that's Hebrew culture right there. You know, the, the, the firstborn is supposed to get a double portion. The other son's still supposed to get something, right? So go ahead on that. And not many days after, the young son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. Right, so this one son, the youngest, he went and spent all of his his living, everything that his father gave him, he went and wasted it all with hanging out in a land that he wasn't even from with other people, right? Go ahead. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. Uh -huh. He went and made league with the people that he didn't belong to, man. Right? And then you know why I'm bringing this out is because this is what our people are doing. We making league with America right now, man. You know, we didn't waste all our substance 
in the ancient times and, and, and we, you know, through riotous living and look at us now, man. This is where we at. We are in the same state as this one son that went away right now. Go ahead. And he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And look, and do they not force us to eat pork over here? And look, you got to look at the symbology of this, this, this whole chapter right here. It's talking about the two prodigal sons. You know what I'm saying? They put pork in damn near everything. Huh? They put all type of unclean and abominable foods in everything. Right? Go ahead. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat. And our people love it, man. <laughs> Pig feet. You know what I'm saying? Hog moths. They love that nasty, filthy animal. Right? Go ahead. And no man gave unto him. Uh -huh. And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? Right, he's looking like, look, man, I, I really, I can't even eat this stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? And that's another cut for Christians who believe you can eat pork, really. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's another cut for that. You can't, you cannot eat unclean foods even until this day, man. Right, so go ahead on that. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned. I have what? I have sinned. Hey, look, this this prodigal son, right? He understood that he was in error. And what did he do? He said, look, I need to go back to my father and I need to confess my sins. That's what we was out here to get our people to do, man. At the very least, the, the family they heard that they was Israelites, you know what I'm saying? That salvation was for them. He didn't get to tell them to repent and keep the commandments. But look, maybe they, you know, we, we, we like to see. Right. Most high, right. send somebody else to water it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then, they, they, then they'll get in a state of repentance. Right, go ahead. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee uh -huh. and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Go ahead. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Come on, so this brother's asking, he's coming in a meek and a humble spirit. You know what I'm saying? And the most hard, like he told David, a, a broken and contrite spirit, will he accept? Right, go ahead. Verse 20. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a far, a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. He had what? Compassion. Hey, look, that's what our people got to do, man. We got to come back to our father, man. Yahweh, and we got to come back through his son, Yahweh Shai, man. You know what I'm saying? Who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. You know, that's the Hebrew names of the Most High and His Son. Go ahead. And ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Uh -huh. And the Son said unto Father, unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Uh -huh. But the Father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Right, and the Most High, is, he's, he got something prepared for us right now. All we gotta do is, is get in that spirit of repentance. Stay in that broken and contrite spirit. You know what I'm saying? Looking to serve the Most High, having the faith, and keeping these commandments. That's what we have to do as a people, man. You know what I'm saying? And the Most High already has the kingdom prepared for us. He got your garment all laid out. You know right, what I'm saying? You right. know how you are the day before school? Yeah, you put the yeah. outfit on the bed. Looking you got your it. shoes, yeah, like, oh, you know, prepared. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Look, hey, that's how we feel right now. We yeah, ready yeah. for this damn kingdom, man. You know, go ahead. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, mm -hmm. and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. Hey look, we got a feast prepared for us, man. Right, go ahead. For this my son was dead. He said this what? My son was dead. He, was he really dead? Was the son dead? No, but he was spiritually dead, man. Cause he went and he followed after the ways of the heathen, of the Gentiles, man. This my son was dead, and that family was dead, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and the Most High opened up, he put the Spirit upon us to be able to explain to them who they are and Most High willing, somebody will water it and some, Most High willing, they all blossom and grow. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and we'll see, we'll see. Go ahead. My son was dead and is alive again. Uh -huh. He was lost and is found and they began to be married. Hey, look, and that's what we hope for. Drop up, read up right quick, and read verse 10 right quick. Because this is what 10. we hope for, huh? Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. Right, so with that, man, they said that they were Israelites, and that's what we was coming out here to, to do. So praises all praises to the Most High. And we say, Pum Yashurah, Pum Yashurah. Man, 